Hey guys, I am back with another video. Today I am going to show you how I made my own Arduino Uno with Type-C port, which have the same form factor of the widely used Arduino. But I have changed some parameters to make it more useful, like the Type-C port, dual GPO pins and many more. The Arduino Uno is a widely used microcontroller board based on the Atmega 328P microcontroller. It is part of the Arduino family designed to simplify electronics and programming for beginners and advanced users alike. First, I went to the EZEDA online website. EZEDA is a web-based PCB design and simulation tool ideal for hobbyists, engineers, and professionals. It provides an intuitive platform for creating schematics, designing multi-layer PCB, and running SPICE simulations to test circuit performance. To get a basic reference of the schematics, I went to the Arduino store. From there, I got all the technical specifications, necessary details for designing the circuit. Then from the documentation section, I downloaded the schematics of the board for reference. This schematic design is a fundamental example of an open source hardware schematic, showcasing how the board's components are interconnected to function as a microcontroller development platform. The LM358 is a low-power, dual-operational amplifier from Texas Instruments. ICSP pins helps to upload firmware and custom code to Arduino. I started by designing the schematics. The Atmega 328 IC is in the SMD version, along with the 3.3 voltage regulator. I have used a female DC jack to take the input voltage. To switch the input voltage from DC jack and the USB, I used an SMD switch having common VCC. With the help of the SMD switch, I made the reset circuit, then attaching a LED to the D13 pin of the Arduino. The IC is programmed using the CP2102 programmer, and an SMD fuse is connected for protection. Then we have the Type-C port as the connection interface of the Arduino. By placing the components on the desired locations, I have completed designing the PCB in the EZEDA software. The photo view of the PCB is available on the tab, as well as the 3D form view. The 3D view feature provides a realistic visualization of PCB designs, enabling users to inspect their boards and components in three dimensions. Then before downloading the zip file of the PCB, I have checked the board for DRC errors, followed by downloading the bill of materials and the pick and place file for the production. On the JLC PCB website, I have uploaded the zip file for production. On checking the board parameters, I have decided to change the default color of the PCB from green to white then switching the PCB for assembly process and stating the parts placement to yes and then confirming it. Then it's the time to upload the bill of materials and the pick and place file for the PCB assembly. Once it's done, I check out the board from the JLC PCB website. Within a matter of six days, I have received the boards. While ordering the boards, we switch the color to white, which gives them a royal look. The screen printing is also well defined. No components were missed out on the assembly process. And the assembly process is also we maintained, giving the board a professional touch. Here is the side-by-side -side comparison of the boards. Before programming the board, it is a good practice to check the components, especially the switch. Also, if having a microscope, just go through the other passive and active components and make sure they are not shorting the circuit. And with a multimeter, we can check the continuity of the tracks. To upload the code and check the Arduino, I went to the Arduino ID software and open the basic blink sketch. Then open the tools and select the board name and the COM port. Once it's done, hit upload the code to the Arduino. If everything goes well, the LED on the Arduino starts to blink with a delay of one second, which was mentioned on the sketch. This is how you can make your very own Arduino from scratch. I hope you like it. If you like it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.